A shader is a set of instructions that graphics card process in real time, containing information for rendering an object based on the lighting input and material parameters. Their use varies from simple texture use to animated effects, realistic physical approximations such as translucency, or even post-processing effects such as color grading or bloom effects. In Unity, the actual shader code is always wrapped in a declarative language called ShaderLab, which is used to organize the shader structure. Since we're going to be using a visual editor, we won't delve deeper into this subject, unless you're interested in learning how to code your own shaders. If you are, Amplify Shader Editor is not only ideal for you to take the first steps into learning shaders, but also a great reference for learning the actual code, since you can create them visually and then examine the code output. Despite there being other types of shaders, we'll be focusing on the most commonly used ones which are surface shaders and fragment and vertex shaders. Unlike surface shaders, vertex and fragment shaders have no built-in concept of how light should behave, so they aren't lit by default. They are particularly useful for shaders that are complex or that require custom lighting or the use of special techniques unavailable with surface shaders. Although we'll be covering specific non-PBR shader types in future tutorials for various uses such as image effects, UI and particle effects, the next couple of videos will focus mostly on the Unity default physically based shader type. Given that it's a Unity standard and, assuming most users have had some contact with it, it's the ideal example for the concepts described in this series. Just keep in mind that you are not limited to standard shaders. The template system for custom shader types, the Node API and the inclusion of full source code ensure that you can adapt our editor to almost any pipeline requirements.